Welcome back everybody to another episode with the Bearded Butchers. Today, this one is going to be about lamb. We do a lot of our videos are about beef. Um, we've done some on chicken. Of course, we've done the wild game. We've done bison. We've done goat. We have done processing videos on lamb, but we haven't really ventured out too much with the cutting and the cooking process. So we thought it'd be kind of cool to show you how to fabricate a lamb rack. And not only are we going to show you how to fabricate a lamb rack, we're going to take it through the cooking process. And here's the interesting thing. We have never actually tried a lamb rack. This will be our first time um, cooking it and eating it. Obviously, we've cut thousands of lambs. Uh, we have fabricated out thousands of lamb racks. We've never tried it ourselves, so now's the time. I have to take a moment and acknowledge our farmer that raises these lambs for us. Our brother-in-law, Craig Simmons, it's his dad, Bill Simmons with Simmons Family. Um, they're located in the next town north of us. He raises all of our lambs. He does a fantastic job. They're locally raised. He breeds all of his own lambs right there on his farm. He feeds them out for us. He's our number one supplier of our lambs here at White Feather Meats. We have a plaque on the front of the building that says lamb and uh, people read it and they come in for it and we can't keep it in our meat cases. So Bill, appreciate that. Thanks for all the excellent work. As you can see, just a wonderful lamb. Now, going down through this lamb carcass, we have the hind quarter, we have the front quarter, and then we have the saddle. So we're gonna break the, the legs off of it, we're gonna break the shoulders off of it, we're going to break the saddle off of it and then we'll get to this lamb rack. First thing we want to do is we want to break these legs off. We want to find that hip bone right there. We want to cut down through that hip bone. Grab my hand saw and break these hind quarters off. So if you're looking for a leg of lamb, that's where you'd get a leg of lamb right there. The key that when you're splitting these is you want to get right down in the middle of that vertebrae. Nice even cut. That way you end up with, when you're cutting bone in chops, you end up with the same amount of bone on, on both sides of the chop. But uh, yeah, like a laser beam down through there. We like to see eight bones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight bones on that rack. Now what we have to do, similar to the beef tomahawk steak, we have to cut the back of this vertebrae off. Just so we can get down through there and trim this up real nice. So there's one. Removing these little riblets, six, seven, eight. 
There's number two. You want to be careful that you don't get into that nice loin meat right there when you break those off, break the vertebrae off the back there. Now you can see that I broke this portion off the middle of this loin. So on this end, we will make a bone-in lamb chop. You can see it looks pretty much like a beef porterhouse steak would where you have the strip side, then you have the fillet side. So, but we break that portion off to make a rack of lamb. And that's what I have here. I decided I'm actually gonna do two today. So we're gonna do uh, one of our racks, we're gonna do seasoned with our Cajun seasoning. The other rack, we're gonna season with our Chipotle seasoning. So my face just happens to be on the Cajun seasoning and Sean's face just happens to be on the Chipotle seasoning. So we're gonna go head to head. He's the older brother. Um, we're gonna see which one we like better. So I wanna start by removing this membrane on the back of these ribs like you see us do so often. And the way I do that is I take my meat hook, get right underneath the rib, pulling this membrane off. Meat hook works really, really well for this. So once you get it started, you can just go to town pulling it right off of there. So there's one. Let's get started on number two. Just get your fingers right underneath there. Pulling that membrane right out. If some of it gets left behind, just simply start over. Just like that. Now that the membrane's been removed, Take the remaining portion of the vertebrae off the back. We want to take our knife. We're going to start just above the eye of the loin, right through that soft cartilage. We want to wind up just above this portion of the eye. You can make a mark right here. Take your knife, bring those two together and then just start removing this meat off these ribs. Just like that. Gonna take just a little bit of this heavy fat off this end with the remaining portion of that soft blade bone. This does have a yellow that cord in there, so we want to take that out. Nobody wants to bite into that. So once we have that done, we want to go down through each rib. We want to clean this meat off in between these. The cleaner you get the bone, the better the presentation will be in the end result of your dish. So just go down through here. Once you get these, the meat removed from in between these rib bones, you can use a piece of string if you'd like and pull some of that membrane off these ribs. I'm just gonna use my knife to clean them up. Just cut down through here like this. So if you go to your local butcher, you have to remember to ask for a French rack. And Frenching is when you leave these long bones on here like this. Uh, makes for a real nice presentation. It actually, you know, more than just looks, it um, gives you something when, when this is cooked and you go to eat it, it gives you a handle to hold on to, to actually bite sort of like a lollipop. So we're just gonna work our way down through here, cleaning up these bones, getting all that excess fat and meat off there. If I was to take this rack of lamb and I was to cut down in between each individual rib, I would then have uh, 
lamb chop, a French lamb chop, tomahawk style, lollipop, whatever you want to call it. So I'll continue to work on this just a little bit, cleaning that up. But that is rack number one. Off to number two. Pretty excited about cooking these and trying them because like I mentioned earlier, personally, never had rack of lamb. So now's our opportunity. through these rib bones. Bones are real soft so you can you can actually cut into them very easy with your knife and get a big chunk of bone with it so just kind of ease your knife blade down through there, not overworking it. I've got my two lamb racks. We're gonna get them on the board and let's get them seasoned. Like I mentioned, we're gonna do one Cajun, one Chipotle. Start with the Beard of Butcher Cajun. I think this one's gonna win just based off the, the guy in the on the picture. Look pretty similar. This one's definitely gonna win. <laughs> What's not to like about that? You should have that guys ugly. You should have to season your own rack. So Cajun peppery base um, has just a little bit of heat. Chipotle is going to have that smoked paprika in there. So we'll just uh, put them to the test. Start with getting a nice coating. You can see that pepper come through. Getting all sides seasoned. gonna have really nice color it's just gonna be delicious on the grill some people may think that we're over seasoning however you do have to remember that we are only seasoning the surface so certainly when we um, Cook it and cut it open. Just having that nice bark on the outside with that seasoning, it'll be just perfect. Now on to the, to the Chipotle. Same thing, just a nice liberal coating. Just like that. So we have Cajun, we have Chipotle. You can see the difference in color with these. That Cajun, I talked about that peppery base. See how it has that little bit, that darker, that darker look. And then over here on the Chipotle, a little bit more orange. And I do want to mention that in both of these spices, there is zero sugar. We use sea salt, a blend of our uh, secret spices, but zero sugar so we think it's going to be a perfect perfect addition to these racks of lamb if you snag a bucket four pound bucket you get the shaker for free so depending on how much you're going to use that's always a wise choice now that we have these seasoned next is the really fun part because we're going to get these on the grill and we're going to give them our sample our very very first time of ever cooking a lamb rack and taste testing it so let's go to the grill And we're back. 
it's time to get this birch barrel fired up and get these racks of lamb on the birch barrel. You know, one thing that we love about the birch barrel is the fact that it's fueled with hard lump charcoal or firewood. So we wouldn't want to do any injustice to these lamb racks and cook them on anything other than either a pellet grill, hard lump charcoal. So let's just get this fired up. Got the cable system. Lift that lid right up. Get the rockwood charcoal dumped in here. We'll take our little fire starters. Light these, get them tucked into that charcoal. So something that I'm else that I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use Rockwood's cherry chunks. And we're gonna smoke these racks of lamb for a bit. So I'm gonna put a few pieces of these cherry chunks in there once we get our fire lit. We're gonna put the lamb racks on inside the lid. We're gonna lift it up over our fire, get that smoke going. Once we get them smoked, uh, get that internal temperature up. We will then um, lower our lid, put the grate over the fire, and we'll sear them off that way. Now, I should mention that I did set these uh, racks of lamb out at room temperature. They've been out for about an hour because you want to bring that internal temp of that rack of lamb up before you start cooking it. That way it cooks nice and evenly. It doesn't burn on the outside and raw on the inside. Let's wait to get our fire built. We're going to get it hot. We're going to add the cherry wood chunks. We'll get them on the grill. Now that our fire, our coals are starting to glow, I'm gonna go ahead and add some of these cherry chunks in here. Get that beautiful aroma going. I think the cherry is gonna pair really nice with the lamb. So just put, you know, six or eight chunks in there like that. Don't have to overdo it. Get that nice clean burn going as soon as those uh, smolder there smolder there for a little bit so we'll get that blue smoke going we'll lower our lid we'll get our racks of lamb on onto the uh, grate and then we're actually going to lift the lid up off this fire um, just get some of that cherry smoke rolling in there uh, we're going to smoke these lamb racks for a little bit so now that our wood chunks have been smoldering for a little bit i'm going to go ahead and lower this lid this unique lid design because what you do is you lower the lid and then you turn it and you go back up in the air like this now what I have is that grate right there over top of that fire so now so now what I can do is just take my racks and I'm just gonna set them on there just like I had them on my table and I'm just gonna set them just like this and we're gonna go ahead and drop the lid get it hooked back up. Now we're gonna lift it and we're gonna pull it up over that fire like this. We're just gonna get some of that nice, beautiful cherry smoke going up underneath this lid. We're gonna watch our temperature. We don't want things to get too hot. We're gonna take the internal temp of these up to maybe just over 100, maybe 105. And then I'll remove them and we will set the grate back down on the grill and we'll just sear them off, take them about 125, let them rest, cut them up, and we'll give them a try. Grab our trusty Insareed thermometer. If anybody wants one, I know somebody's gonna ask. We've got them on our website. They've got our logo right there on them. We love these thermometers, so go check them out. I just wanna take these over, just over 100 degrees. We're about 95 right now, so 100 to 105, somewhere in there. So. I can regulate my temperature just by lowering my lid a little bit. So as soon as we hit that 105-ish, we're gonna get them off. We're gonna wrap the bones with some aluminum foil. We're gonna lower the grate, get them back on the birch barrel. So we're out front of our shop here at White Feather Meats and it never fails. Whenever we start cooking, there's all kinds of noise. Today, there just happens to be a parking lot going in next door. So if you hear a little background noise, apologize for that. But uh, here we are just out front of our shop, cooking some great food. So we just hit about 105 degrees. So I've got to get these racks off of here, get them on my board so we can get them 
back on the grill. So we're just gonna lower this grate down, twist that lid, get it up off that grate. Let's move these out here to our board, keeping them straight. So this is a Cajun, this is a Chipotle, just like we have labeled on our sides. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna continue to let that fire just sit there. We're gonna get these bones wrapped with aluminum foil and then we'll sear them right on that grate over that fire. So I've just got a couple of small pieces of aluminum foil here. Even though it looks cool having it like this, and maybe I'll put it back like that once they're cooked. I'm gonna go ahead and separate these. I'm gonna get some of this foil and just wrap them around these bones. We don't want those bones to, to burn. Just get them wrapped up like that for our sear. Now that we've got the foil around those bones, this being the Cajun rack, we're just gonna go ahead and get it set right on the fire. Just like that. We'll get the Chipotle on there. Just like this. So as you can see, I have my basket in the birch barrel lowered down. Um, obviously the higher you bring that on those notches, the closer that fire is gonna be to that product. But I kinda want a little bit of uh, leeway there, a little, little safety zone. So I went ahead and lowered it. I'm gonna go ahead and flip. Boy, look at that sizzle. Now this is where I wanna be really careful that I don't overcook these. So I'm gonna be checking these quite a bit. And I only wanna take them to about mid 120s. We're getting close on the end. Not quite there in the center. Right there in the center we are 126. This one's coming off. Woo! We have officially met temp. Let me go ahead and get this lid down, get this birch barrel sealed up, remove this foil. See how nice those bones look that we put that foil on there. Now, we're simply gonna let them rest and we'll slice them and we'll sample. And we are rested we went to about 125 right in there, 126. Our temp's coming down. So here's the cool thing that we feel about our channel. Not only did we cook it, we did the slaughtering process on this lamb. We did the butchering process. We own the seasoning company. We're all family owned. And we took it to the grill. Now let's take it to the table. So we've got some girls inside that are working behind the counter that volunteered to try some lamb. And uh, I think I want to also. Let's go try it. All right, the moment of truth. But before we start, I gotta introduce somebody. We don't happen to look alike, do we? <laughs> A little bit. <laughs> this is our sister, Shannon. Shannon lives in Pennsylvania. She came into town. So she's gonna help us sample. Not only will Shannon be helping us sample, but uh, these gals and our nephew, Shane, will be also. So the interesting thing here is I mentioned Bill Simmons Simmons family who raised the lamb. Grace Skunkelman and Shane Simmons are Bill and Linda Simmons's grandkids. So Grace Sattemeyer, she works here, so she'll be sampling them as well. Um, we love to have a local family atmosphere and we're gonna share these beautiful lamb chops with them. So let's just cut them up. We'll get them cut into chops and we'll see how we did. Cajun on this side, Chipotle on this side. Let's just get them separated. We'll get them sliced and then everybody can try them and see which ones they, they like. table. I'm actually going to flip this one over. Mm. 
to a nice, the nice thing that medium I love about rare. Chops is that French chops is that they they're meat on a their lollipops, meat with a handle. Meat on a stick. Mm-hmm. I gotta get them all turned the right way. There we go. So now you can see that that long bone. It's an easy way to eat it. It's got that nice crust on the outside, that nice medium rare on the inside. Hey, ladies first. Oh, yes. Yeah. Get in there, girls. <laughs> Grab a lollipop. The two Graces and Shannon, hop in there. All right. So you're, you're trying Chipotle first. So that's the Chipotle. Get in there, Shane. Oh, wow, that's good. Mm. Oh. Mm. That's delicious. That is tender as all get out. How'd we do? Yeah. Excellent. Good. Cheers. <laughs> ah. I never cheered Man. with a meat stick before. That's amazing. That fat on there too is super buttery. Yeah. Mm. I'm gonna That's get incredible. In on the, I'm going to get in on the Cajun. Actually, I want one at the end with a little bit more of that. Let's see if that Cajun has a little bit more of that uh, that peppery bite that, that oh. hits you. Oh, that's... Wow. Wow. You know what I just got out of that was gyro. Like just with the with the, the flavor of that lamb, that nice flavor, and then those peppery tones hitting. And didn't that uh, birch barrel do such a good job with that cherry smoke flavor? Yeah. So that initial part of that cook and then going right into the, the sear. What do you think everybody? Winner, winner. So, it sounds like Cajun wins. Yep. So excellent job. Cut, I know. Up. Thanks. I know it's got my face on there, but uh, hey, everybody else said it before I did that Cajun wins. Wow. But not that oh, the man. Chipotle get isn't that any good. Crunch but. on there. Get that little bit of that caramelized, crunched fat with isn't birch barrel. And so I tried really, really, really hard not to overcook these, and you can see that nice medium rare. 125 is about as high as you want to go on, on lamb chops. You could even probably go to 120 if you want. Um, and then let them rest. So letting them rest is key. Um, they drop in temp a little bit when we did that, but right now they're the perfect temperature to eat. And man, talk about a breakfast here at White Feather Meats, right? <laughs> Who else gets to eat <laughs> lamb chops for breakfast? Some more. You know what, we're, do we're doing it again because Poor Spencer. Our cameraman yeah, where's my needs lamb a lamb chop. chop. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> I brought a lollipop. <laughs> that that was good, outro. wasn't it? Yeah, that's that's delicious. Delicious. What do you think, Charlie? First... You want a bite, huh? <laughs> give, yeah, give you Charlie want a bite, some. Charlie? Huh? Don't leave Charlie. Blade. Just give him the whole bone. Oh, you want the whole game? Yeah, yeah you there that? you go. There you go, Charlie. Everybody's included around there he here. Goes. So First time ever cooking lamb. I kid you not. Hold, I've, hold up, I've never. Hold, hold up. I don't. I, I don't know what you did there, but that's that Cajun. <laughs> that's that Cajun seasoning. Makeup. Can we get makeup on set. <laughs> we don't have a makeup artist on nope. set. Just a, a beard fluffer. Anyways, first time ever cooking lamb. Um, Amazing. It was delicious. Incredible. I, I've, I've had lamb burgers that I've, I've made. Eat, but I've eaten lamb. For sure. I personally never cooked lamb. Really? Yeah. Um, like I said, watch those temps. I was super careful on that birch barrel to make sure that they didn't get overcooked. So birch barrel, fantastic design. Go check them out, birchbarrel.com. Um, if you want one, they'll ship one right to your door. But um, yeah, awesome job. Thanks. So today you saw the lamb, French rack coming out of that lamb, local raised lamb, family raised lamb. Doesn't get any better. Tasted awesome. Seth did a great job of prepping it then get it on a birch barrel. Came off there just bomb.com. So good job. Thanks. Once again, you've watched America's Butchers, the Bearded Butchers here on YouTube. One more video coming at you with hundreds more to come. So like we always say in our videos, don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell for notifications, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, you name it, follow us. And oh, by the way, Grab a bottle of seasoning or two. We promise you won't regret it. So until next we time. We make meat better. So <laughs> grab that spice, throw it on that meat. Absolutely. Until next time, see you guys.